Harlech Castle saw the longest siege in British history, between 1461 and 1468, where the men of Harlech would not yield. <laughs> The castle ruins stand proud on the hilltop, overlooking a golf course that has been granted royal status, providing a new battleground, and like the castle, the quest to overcome its defences are a significant challenge. For me, the purest form of the game is Lynx Golf, of which Royal St. David's is the epitome of. At first glance, Lynx Golf can often appear to be a barren landscape, an uncompromising terrain, firm and fast greens, a wind that changes with the tide, rolling fairways, uneven lies, and runoffs that gather and punish. The challenge is ever changing, but the charm and purity of the game is eternal. Right, so two holes to warm up. The best way I can describe it is think of the classic open scenes where you've got the white fairways, all burnt, middle of July, classic open visuals. And that's what we've got down here at Royal St. David's this morning. It looks absolutely stunning. Not a breath of wind, which is unusual down here, I can tell you. And you've got the tee shot. It's, the crowds are gathering. And we've just got it's a three wood with a bit of cut off the left hand side. Oh, do you know what? He's, unexpectedly, that's happened. Go on then. Go on then, Paul. Not often you describe it, it happens, but it just did. Right, so people often ask me what is it I love about Lynx Golf, and there's, there's lots of things, but one of, the, one of the big deals is I like trying to play shots that. I don't necessarily have the capability to do, but I like trying them out here. And this is a 175, slightly into the wind. Uh, I'd normally be sort of full on six iron. But out here today when the uh, the runnings are really fiery and firm, you know that's gonna pounce off. Then I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna go up to a fiber it really soft and try and just uh, feed one in and watch it rolling off the canvas straight into the hole. <laughs> but it's just, like I said, I, I don't even mind when I can't execute what I'm doing, but I just love trying to emulate those type of shots. I've overcut it. It's a nice try and will it feed onto that green? You see it running on there. Do you know what? It's done all right. It's down the sort of bottom end of that uh, of the green. It's okay. It's pretty much like I said, not good enough to execute it, but I still love trying it. Well, the idea of this hole was just to show you the tee shot, but I've also, this is where I finished. And, uh, you know, well, it wasn't too bad, but it just, again, shows you a real feature of Lynx Golf. And it's these uh, swales and runoffs that I'd call them. A fantastic feature of golf. They make it, it's, they, they make, it's the tough part of Lynx Golf as well. It can often be really punishing, even on good shots. You've either got a really good short game if you can uh, chip this one close. But for me, a bit of choice of uh, Texas Wedge. And trying to get this one up and down in two. It's no easy feat. Go ball. Go a bit more. I oh, do you know what I'd take that. But what a rise and again, what a great feature of Lynx Golf at Royal St. David's. Little par three, uh, hole 11. Punch ball green, um, just 130 yards, nothing of it. Into the breeze and one that everybody remembers who's played here at, uh, at Royal St. David's. Just hang on there, hang on to the left hand side. It's a good club in terms of distance, I think. And kick. 
Right, my ball did okay, better than I thought to be honest with you, but I just wanted to stop, we're still on 11 that is, and uh, show you some of these. Well, there's a lot of work going on around St. David's and the sort of humps and bumps and these big swales that they've built, it's a fantastic addition. And you send your ball off down the left, off the tee shot, and you can see how all of a sudden you might get a kick straight back down again and still find yourself up on a green. In that instance, the help, but believe me, these swales can either be, uh, well, they can sometimes be punishing as well, but a great addition to the course here at Royal St. David's. Yeah, it's challenge time again, a bit of man versus golf, and I love this golf hole. It's a 15th, it's stroke three, it's a toughen, but it's a stunning par four. I think it's time I took it on and beat it, because it's beat me up many times over the years. Right, first thing is to find a short stuff, and like I said, this is, this is in the dunes. Green, uh, let's forget about the green for now. I'm gonna go with three wood, and I'm gonna try and hit a bit of a cut. Start it down that left hand side and feed it back in. Sounds perfect. Oh, it's, it's a good ball, it hasn't cut enough, but where does that finish in terms of distance? I think that's okay. Decent ball, solid, didn't cut, but a decent start. Happy with that. Right, so tee shot just ran off the fairway, but reasonably happy with it. But you've got this is a hole where you've got to walk forward and have a look if you've not played it before, especially. It's a little bit blind and uh, it's a tough one. Pick out a line and stick with it. We've got a camera up there, but uh, that's a little bit ambitious, I think. Oh, it's a great strike, you know. You'll see this before I do, because like I said, that green's blind to me. I think there's a white mark that I was aiming for, and I'm right on it. So you tell me, how's that got on? I don't know whether you'll have seen that land yet, because obviously I've not, not seen the footage, because there's some, like I said, some severe uh, drop-offs, and it looks as though it's pitched in somewhere around here. So hopefully you got it. But anyway, the point is, we landed on the green, and uh, pretty happy with that, to be fair. Stroke index three, button for birdie. Come on, make my day. Go on, ball. Go on. Ah, decent pace, but to be honest with you, still on that tee, and assuming I can make that, which I did, that's a blinking good four, but what a good golf hole, more importantly. And when the bogeys do come, and I'm sure they will, with a deep breath and a lean on the putter, taking a view, the high dunes, the castle, the Snowdon Mountains, whichever way you look, it should act as a reminder that you're a very lucky golfer right now. I think the mark of any good golf course is sort of, it asks you questions and it can of your game and it continually does that. That doesn't matter whether you're on the tee, whether it's iron shots, even simple and straightforward chips, at least that's how they appear. But Royal St. David's does that literally right the way throughout the course. And uh, there's a lot of questions. I'm afraid I don't have too many answers for it. And another delicate little chip in here into a firm green. Oh, hang on, that's half decent. Go a little bit more, go a little bit more. Yeah, it's somewhere around there. That's not a bad answer on this occasion, but Royal St. David's, real good design and a quality and a mark of an exceptional golf course. Right, that's me done. A great start to our series in North Wales. Royal St. David's was absolutely fantastic, but still Harlech refuses to yield. Well, not a lot anyway. 